And welcome to the 1035 from BBC One. It's a very exciting race for you tonight. It's Hollywood Starlet on the outside lane from Lanky Fanniman and National Treasure on the inside. And they're off. <laughs> this race could take some time. Let's go, so! Our favourite Brit in Hollywood, Minnie Driver, is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, she's so lovely. Britain's brightest presenter, Claire Balding, is on the show. Top buddy man, Stephen Merchant, is here. And chart topping Irish band, The Script, will be on the show, ladies and gentlemen. I know. <laughs> Always nice to have uh, Stephen back on the show. Of course, at six foot seven, he often towers over his colleagues, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, that's something Claire knows all about. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> uh, <laughs> up you hop. Uh, that's Claire Newmarket. Uh, Claire's the new face of Channel 4 Racing. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they wanted someone with more glamour, style, more sex appeal than her predecessor. all the big races. Here she is at Royal Ascot. Oh! Now, that's Ladies' Day, where everybody wears a hat. They do. <laughs> Bless. Uh, Claire uh, was also one of the stars of the BBC's Olympic coverage. Oh, I tell you, I love the way children got into the Olympics. Wasn't it sweet? I mean, here's some kids who've just seen Usain Bolt warming up. And uh, here's some who've just spotted Mo Farah training. Oh. And here's one who's just heard the Spice Girls at the closing ceremony. <laughs> ah, da, da, da. <laughs> uh, Minnie and Stephen are both starring in the hit new rom-com, I Give It A Year. Yeah, it's all about a, a doomed marriage. Doomed marriage? Where did they get the idea from? Hmm, 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 hmm? <laughs> uh, oh. That's Katie Price with her new husband, Kieran. And if you're watching the Monday Night Repeat, I'm sorry that didn't work out. <laughs> 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 but you do think, where did that bloke come from? How did he end up marrying Katie Price? Husband number three, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll all marry her eventually. Hang on. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll be having music from The Script. We've sold it up in the office. It's Stephen Merchant! Oh, beautiful. Let me greet you. Let me greet you. Hello, sir. Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Seems like that. It's all gone. will be a great guest. It's Claire Balding! Hello. Hello. Oh, so evening. Have a seat. Have a seat. And mirror signal maneuver. It's Minnie Driver! I feel like the scruffy one. I'm just wearing a corduroy jacket. Look at you three. Beautiful. We've been comparing heels. We go on then. Because I said I, I can't really walk in heels more yeah, than two steps. And Minnie said, I'll oh, raise you. Do you actually, know they what? are Actually, I'm sorry, I, I didn't but really. Do you mind if I take them off? No, but <laughs> <laughs> Can I just take my trousers off? Please? <laughs> Is that all right? She's yeah. so at home. Oh. oh, look at you all comfy. There we are. Oh, oh that's so much better. Hey, now, a very British, a very British couch. Because you, you've been out of the country. I Why have. have you been away? Tell me what happened. Claire Walding went from kind of jobbing presenter. National treasure. <laughs> national icon. National. The word national is always in front of me. She's like a, a building society now. <laughs> <laughs> I can lend you money. It's fine. <laughs> Dame Claire Walding. <laughs> oh. Are you a Dame? No, I'm not. <laughs> Did you get anything in the honours? No. Why not? 
Because I'm married. That's an I outrage. don't deserve anything. Don't be silly. That's shocking. It's not. They gave awards to every man and his dog. They didn't give none to me, Graham, and I'm livid. Honestly, Bradley <laughs> Wiggins gets a knighthood for winning something, for riding a bike. <laughs> I've got three BAFTAs and two Golden Globes. Not a sniff. <laughs> not even a poxy OBE. Everyone's got an OBE. You've probably got an OBE. No, no I don't. No, no. But I don't yeah. deserve it. Give it, it time. Yeah. Because <laughs> there uh, is... Uh, did you... Notice this resemblance, or did people tweet you about this resemblance? Well, for a while, somebody told me that I looked a bit like Kenneth Branagh, but Kenneth Branagh is Henry V, and actually I do. No, no, so you, you really, I no, really do. No, 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 here it is. This. this is uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> so I use that as my avatar. For quite a lot. And very I, pretty. To but be I, fair, I met him um, at, over Christmas. Oh I was I was doing some oh programs. He is wearing too. eye makeup. He's oh wearing eye makeup. God. But I sh I said to him, oh, I've been abusing your image and using you as my, my avatar. avatar. Yeah, look. <laughs> <laughs> he was very good. He laughed about it. And you used that picture of Brandon, and people thought that was you. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Miss Brown, you're mad about the Twitter. I love the Twitter. Well. It's sweet. Your followers are sending you pictures. Did you ask them to do this? Well, I got quite attached to... I like things that look like people, like buildings or boxes or things that aren't meant to look like people, and people started sending me pictures. I know it sounds odd. No, they're sweet. We've got to some. This, this, is, mad this is some boxes plotting. <laughs> <laughs> plotting. Plotting boxes. They do look evil. They do, they do look like they're really, yes. They well, what are you doing with the files? <laughs> this, so tell us who this door handle looks like. Because this is very look. good. Kenneth Williams! Yeah, I can see Ooh. that. Yeah. It looks like... It does look like Kenneth Williams. Oh, <laughs> And then this is... Great, this is a, a sort of astonished toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the people send me these that look funny. <laughs> is it rude of me to say, but that does have a... It doesn't look like you, but it, it has a whiff of you. <laughs> not a... Not a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mini Driver, and indeed Stephen Merchant, uh, you're in this movie. I give it a year. I give it a year. It opens on the 8th of February. Now, this is a weird question to ask you, Mini, because I've seen the film. But who are you in it? Because it's never quite explained who I mean, you are. So it's not a terrible thing to say. It doesn't I'm matter. I'm meant to be her sister. Oh, OK. But it is never really qualified. Because I, I wasn't sure. No, I mean, it, uh, it's a fair question from, you know... Yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you yeah. in this film? <laughs> well... No, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it just never... And you are very funny in it. Oh, good, thanks, love. Yes. He, no, well, he just doesn't know why you're in it. He doesn't know why you're in it. <laughs> yeah, you've got some really good lines in it. I've very got some good lines. Well, that's thanks to Dan Mazer. And there's very little rom in this rom-com. There is right. very little rom. Yeah, a lot of calm. Loads of calm. It's a yeah. really, really funny movie. Um, and this is the scene. <laughs> it's Christmas, and it's sort of when Shrade Shiraz goes wrong, and you're there with your husband, who's a doctor. I'm there with my husband, who's a doctor, That's yes. all we need to know. Here's a clip. Here we go. <clears throat> right. Television. Television. Four, Four words. Four words. First, first word, word, first word. I can't contest. Oh, duck. Duck. Tapping. Uh, hanging, um, hanging. Vera Duck. Computer. Vera Duck. Um, um, braille. Uh, um, red. 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 Thick. Stupid. Man. Effeminate. Husband. Husband. Annoying. Idiot. Father. Disappointment. Shame. Uh, Regret. Profession. Um, lazy. Doctor. Sadness. Doctor. Do thank you. Doctor. This doctor is not Foot the doctors. first thing you do when you look Forward. at him. Forward. <laughs> 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 What's weird is, because, it, it, like I say, there isn't a lot of romance in a, a rom com but that marriage, your marriage, has got sort of a functional relationship in the movie. Well, it does. I think it's very... I think it's very real in that you don't... you don't sort of have to like the person you love all the time. And it's not the romanticising of a relationship, it's the warts and all, um, which is what that central, lovely Rose Byrne and Rafe Spall are trying to... they're trying to make it work and it's just not working. Um, so it's it's what happens when you when you give up and just give into it to being a cynical old cow like me <laughs> in the film. <laughs> in the film. And uh, and your part was it written for you your part? Yes, Dan said that. Yes, he he wrote the role of a sort of socially autistic 
nerd who <laughs> always says the wrong thing. I love the two exactly. women. The two women just... Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, no, I'd have called you Steve. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, and so that's why I did it. Yeah. So, do you, the inappropriate things you say sometimes... Yes. Do in they... the movie? Well, no, or in always, life. Always, always. Are they intentional? Never. Never. I honestly... Someone asked me on the red carpet, what would your superpower be if you could have one? And I said to never be embarrassed because I'm crippled by the thought of being embarrassing. And so many of the things I've done, you know, in TV shows and stuff are about that anxiety of embarrassment. And I'm always... You remember when I was here last time, Graham? Do you remember this? Why? What happened? So I was talking about my stand-up show, which was about finding a wife. And the brilliant Joe Brand was on the show. She yes. was sat where you are. Joe Brand's hilarious. She was great. She's fantastic. I love Joe Brand. She's fantastic. So we're talking about the show, and I said, I'm hoping I'll find a, a beautiful wife. And, uh, and Joe said, are only beautiful women allowed to come to the show? And I said, no, everyone's welcome, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, it never occurred to me. Graham, I swear, it never occurred to me that it... But it just came... And, oh, my God. It's, I don't know if it's an English thing or... Well, it, it, certainly the movie is really... It seems a really British take on a wrong... There's a clip, by the way. This oh, is okay. the scene. We're going to watch a clip. Uh, so, you're a best man. Yeah. And uh, we've got a clip of you giving uh, the best man's speech. And for those of you who don't know me, and especially if we meet in the bar later, my name is Danny. Do you want a pint? Uh, <laughs> Danny, do you want a pint? <laughs> Fornication. I'll read that again. For an occasion like this, uh, I want to make sure I keep up the traditions of being a best man. Uh, apparently, I need to get the groom to the church on time. Tick. Uh, I need to remember the rings. Did that. And I need to have sex with a bridesmaid. <laughs> I, to be fair, I, I wrote these um, before I knew them. It's great to see so many people turn up to see Josh finally tie the knot. And about time, too. Nat's got it all. She's brilliantly clever, apparently really delivers in the bedroom. Um, like mother, like daughter, eh? You know what I'm talking about. No. And uh, I don't know about you, but I feel she could easily be a model. I think we'll agree, um, if it wasn't for her, her nose. Very good. It's funny. <laughs> oh. Uh, funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because Stephen, you, after your your tour, Hello Ladies, yeah. was about looking for love. Right. Did it work? No. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Um, no. I, I discovered that most of the groupies that hang around outside the door are middle-aged men who work in IT. <laughs> um, so I've had some fun nights, as you can imagine. <laughs> but, uh, no, but there was no um, there was no no wives. <laughs> Really? Unfortunately, yeah. And I've been everywhere. Australia, America, New Zealand. I mean, I've looked high and low. <laughs> yeah, still looking, still looking. Um, so, so I've really lowered my standards now. OK. Yeah. <laughs> there might be someone... Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> this is what I mean. I always put my foot in it. You know, they were on my side. And... <laughs> yeah. You never in a no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're single at the moment. Right. You're stepping out, I believe. Don't say any more. I'm not prying. I'm not, you know, I'm not going all tabloid on your ass, but you what, you're dating, aren't you? Dating. Yes. You're dating. <laughs> and, and didn't your, your son come and... Didn't he try to marry you? He did. He wanted to marry him. Well, I said... He said... Well, I know. I was a bit... Another... I, it is a bit... Your son wanted to marry you. There. He's only four. Kind of and he thought... Are you? He thought... <laughs> Walking <laughs> around in provocative clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like Miss? Was it Miss Havisham? No. <laughs> what do you Four. mean? He wanted to marry you. I don't understand. Because he said, "I want a brother and a sister," and I said, "Well, you've got to have a husband to to get one of those." And he went, "Oh, I can be that." <laughs> exactly. Ah, oh, not revolting. That's all you know. <laughs> That's all your disgusting piggery in your head. <laughs> it's for him. Weird, driver. But how did you explain to him that he couldn't be I without hurting said, that they are I married said... now? <laughs> <laughs> She couldn't break it to him. <laughs> He's so spoiled, Claire. <laughs> anything he wants. Well, anything he wants. Of course you can marry <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> That's so wrong! <laughs> and Claire, you're all settled and civil part. How many years? Ten? Uh, ten years together, six years civil partnership. Shit, civilly partnered, however you meant to say it. I, I thought know. you just said punished. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. <laughs> 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 and actually, my, my, one of my nephews, who's the same age as your son, he's, he's four, and he said to me, because he absolutely adores Alice, they all adore Alice, so do I, and uh, he said, Auntie Claire, can men and women get married too? <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I said, yes, yes your parents are. <laughs> 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 what have they told you? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
haven't noticed. No. But I always get worried. Now, you say you've been together with your partner a long time. Um, I'm terrified. Do you not ever get fearful of getting bored? No. I thought I'd never get bored of Wii Tennis. It's in the loft. <laughs> 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 Right, now, Dame Claire Balding, there you are. You have to stop Dame. saying that, yeah. you'll get arrested. Oh, honestly, well, I'll keep saying it until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> because it, I can't believe they didn't give you anything. Yeah, but I just was doing my job, I wasn't doing anything different. You were sat there going, it. here's the swimming for nearly a month. <laughs> <laughs> We Mark Foster. Foster. Oh, Mark that was Foster. my prize. Yes, yes, very nice. But no, listen, it's all changed. All shiny floored and Saturday nighted up. Because uh, Britain's brightest on BBC One, 6.45 Saturday nights. And I love that this is on Saturday night, because it seems an unlikely thing to put on a Saturday night. What, because it's intelligent? Well, yes, but <laughs> on the other side, there's people, there's people falling off planks into water. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but... So talk us through the premise of it. Uh, the premise is that we are looking for people who are really bright. So it's not just numeracy. Don't look at me. I am looking at you. I'm ignoring, him. I'm ignoring him. I'm ignoring him. He's not in it. Uh, but numeracy, literacy, memory, um, but emotional intelligence as well. So social perception is tested. It's. I love it because there are lots of people come on who haven't necessarily done well in exams, and it shows you how bad exams are for testing whether we're actually bright or not. And I think all round brightness gets you further in life than. Academic brilliance. No, it's also because they're all they all look quite un, you know unlikely to be on television. Well, I think they're very I don't think they're sort of proper contestants, the ones that go on quizzes all the time on telly, you know, people that do that when they're really young and suddenly get on a show and try and show how clever they are. Do you know that he's been on a quiz when he I was really he young? Has. I do he has that look about somebody that might you were, weren't you? You're saying I look like a nerd. <laughs> I mean, obviously not now. There's plenty of those, but is there one back when you were young? There's younger? probably one that Gra it. Graham's probably got one in the. Yes, I do. Because uh, <laughs> Stephen, Stephen was on Blockbusters. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's a word. Because now it sounds funny that you did it, but presumably at the time you didn't do it ironically. I was old enough to know better. Yeah. Did you say? Did you say? Can I have a pee? -pee? Well, please, Bob. Because that's <laughs> the one thing everybody used to say. I have to admit that it was. Uh, they revived the show with Michael Aspel oh. some, you know, a little while after the original series. So I was on when I was maybe I was like twenty or something. How old? And, yeah. You were I know, twenty. I was too old. I was. Too <laughs> you old to look do it. younger. Here you are. Yeah. <gasps> Which one are you? <laughs> That's me trying to figure out the question. Did you have a cuddly toy? Like a mascot? They didn't allow you. They didn't. They changed all the rules. There was oh. no cuddly toys. The thing I never understood, why was it one person against two people? Yeah, I agree. Because um, <laughs> I used to watch the show thinking, which idiot goes on on, the, on their own? Yeah. <laughs> and people say, you know, why didn't you go on with a friend? If I had a friend, I wouldn't oh, have been no. on Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> It, I did. I mean, I, I dread to think how I would do on your show because I think I'm quite a smart bloke, but I was terrible. It's the pressure of the moment and the lights. It's so intense because I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I've, you know, I've worked with Les Dennis, all the big names. <laughs> and, but Les obviously used to do Family Fortunes, and I would always ask him like, what, you know, the best, the funny answers. And I understand that. Like, there was one. I remember it was uh, name a bird with a long neck, and the answer was Naomi Campbell. <laughs> Understand. I can I totally understand. There was one moment, my favorite one was name something that you would open other than a door, and the answer was your bowels. <laughs> but honestly, I completely understand because you just you're under the pressure of the lights and stuff, it's such a different. Well now I think one of the appeals of you, Claire Balding, is that people see you as kind of an every woman. Do you know people can relate That's to you? That's nice. Uh, yeah, very... But having read your book, which is my animals and other family. I mean, you, it's very far from every woman. It's an extraordinary childhood you had. It, I mean, it's like, you know, the Blandings that's done at the moment. Yeah. It's like you grew up in kind of B.G. Woodhouse land. Did you know your family well, was it, bonkers? It was my reality, so no, I didn't really. Well, I knew that Dad wasn't, you know, great at health and safety, for example, <laughs> tying toboggans to the back of the truck and taking us up on the downs and then not realising my brother had fallen off like a mile away because we were <laughs> swinging behind this truck across the snow. I really enjoyed it, though. I thought that was great. I think I vibed it. Yes. That's what's important. Yes. And I thought I was a dog for most of the beginning of my life, so, you know. I but, got... but you pretended to be a dog to get attention. Yes. And you were an only child at the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. But, you see, I do 
could see what's <laughs> odd about that. I could see the dogs were getting a lot of attention, and we had a boxer and two lurchers at that time. So I thought I'll be a dog, and then they'll be not, they'll they'll you know rough my hair up. <laughs> and what's really you tell you tell your life through yeah. animals that you've met and known throughout your life. And what was the Shetland? Was it uh, Valkyrie? Valkyrie that you brought into lunch? Yeah, well I brought her into the kitchen. Yeah, I thought she'd want to be with us. Of course. Yes, unfortunately. It was she... a little Shetland pony. Yes. It wasn't a full size. No, no, very. Because that would be mad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the doors aren't big I mean, enough. It I was a big try. house. It was that. a big house, right. but yeah. Yeah, so I brought her in, but then she she did a dropping in the kitchen, and my mother wasn't very pleased. Well, that's good. That shows standards. I feel. <laughs> um, it'd be terrible if your mother was relaxed about that. <laughs> Don't worry about oh, it. What ho? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bit of a stink in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> there's. I, the pictures in the book are amazing. This is a fantastic. This is your house, lunch, and look who's popped into lunch. It's the Queen I Mother <laughs> in a hat. I love the fact she kept her hat on for lunch. I know, and look at the and effort. That's me the, just in the foreground. The placemat. Sorry, every... you've not yet asked, why was the Queen Mother at your house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my father trained racehorses for, right. for the Queen and, and for the Queen Mother. Oh, and, the... and she liked to tipple, uh, didn't the... she, on the, on the races, didn't she? No. No? No, she didn't oh, gamble. Really? No. Um, not really. No. Um, <laughs> so she came to see her horses and, and stayed for lunch. It's an extraordinary, it is an extraordinary child. And it would make a really good film. Well, they're talking, though, we're in big discussions at the moment about the dramatisation of it. Kenneth going to play her. Take me. Oscar! best role ever. <laughs> Kenneth Branagh <laughs> is Claire Bald. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be amazing. Him in a dress bringing a pony into the kitchen. <laughs> wow. That's fun, I think. Andy Circus can play the pony. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this cast. And he'll play the Queen Mum. Well, actually, maybe you, Mum. No, Stephen Merchant play plays the, the jockey, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Well, no, that is the other thing in this book. I, I, maybe everyone knew this. I didn't realise how serious you were about being a jockey. I mean, you were a proper jockey. Well, I was an amateur jockey, oh, yeah, I for a couple... You, a I'm, you, what you mean is I look quite heavy to be a jockey, no. and you're right. You're no, tall you're right. to be a jockey. Well, yes, and heavy. Um, but <laughs> but <laughs> I, won, not... I won the amateur championship, and I won my weight in champagne. <laughs> <laughs> the sponsors pulled out the following year. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they did. <laughs> Champagne did my 21st yeah. birthday party. Okay. Yeah, and then they... Came. But it's weird how I've had, you know, actresses on here who their big dream is to be a ballerina, but then they just grew or... You know, it's odd how your body betrays you and you can't do the thing you but really I was want all, to. But I really was always quite heavy, so it was a real struggle. I mean, I'd eat and drink nothing and I'd run in a sweatsuit and then sit in the sauna and then go in the bed with an electric blanket on and sweat and sweat. And Dad could lose a lot of weight and he could, like, lose five or six pounds in one day. And I always thought, therefore, I'd be able to, but I couldn't. And you became obsessed with it. You knew, like, you cut your nails to lose yeah, weight. Yeah, that didn't really make any difference, unfortunately. <laughs> I realised that. I kept my hair very short because I thought that must weigh something. That doesn't make any difference either. <laughs> yes. The, and it, it is a different world because you're, you're racing against people like Princess Anne. Yes, Princess Anne was sort of riding on the amateur race circuit at the same time I was, and, and, and I was sort of 18, 19, and Princess Anne was a little bit older. And uh, we, raced, we rode against each other in a race at Beverly, and I managed to carve her up. Well, Without realising, I literally went, my horse, he decided to do it, but he jumped a path that's and he your went... That's story, yeah. He went yeah. across the... That's what I told her. <laughs> <laughs> but she was probably cross, wasn't she? She was probably cross. Well, and fair dues, actually, cos I... So I carved... I, I cut her up on the bend, and then we had about another mile to race, and then really... And you were going, ah, screw you, <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> It was her, but I could hear a lot of chat behind me and quite a lot of swearing. And then when we came into the straight, there was sort of five horses crossed the line together, a proper blanket finish. And as I'm pulling up, I'm thinking, I think I've just won that. But don't, I didn't realise until I came back and my mother was absolutely pale as anything. And she looked at me and she said, do you know what you've done? I said, yeah, I think I've won. She said, no, you've carved up Princess Anne. And Princess Anne finished second and dead heat for second. So then I was absolutely terrified to go back into the changing room. It was slightly unnerving because obviously all the girls have gotten there before I had, so they were in various states of undress. <laughs> so, it's such an amazing image. Like... Princess Anne with a towel going, Where's Bolden? I'm going to give her hell. <laughs> so it was a little frosty because, uh, you know. And have you made peace? Well, I hope so. Well, I mean, I, I see Zara Phillips it's why a, a she lot. didn't get the OB. <laughs> <laughs> of course! It all makes sense now! <laughs> 
Never lie to a big cross like that. Off the list. No, no, no. Now, in the book, you talk about the, the complicated thing of naming horses, because people do name horses such weird things. And, uh, and the people try to smuggle quite rude names in. Yeah. Now, Big Tits, was Big Tits allowed here? Big Tits was allowed oh in France, God. but not here. So Is that because they didn't know what Big Tits were? But possibly, yes. <laughs> that was a real name. That was a real name of a horse in tits. France. But then tits. That... Big Tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the outside Big Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Because in, uh, in Wyoming, the Grand Tetons, uh, the, the French trappers, that's what it's called, big tits. Grand Teton means big tits. And that's what the mountain, the Grand Tetons are, the... Big tits? Yeah. Could I be on your show? <laughs> well, in, my, in the dramatisation? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm on your brainy, brainy... Oh, right, a bit to say. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were so... Claire, Claire wasn't even considering no. that. Yeah. Well, she can't <laughs> mean that show where I'm looking for intelligent people. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you can, Minnie. Yes. <laughs> Ignore him. Oh, you do a celebrity special. Do a celebrity yes. special for Christmas. Here's a celebrity pity special. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I hope there's a question about the French for big tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is grand tits. <laughs> essentially. Well, we got the British Horse Racing Authority, bless them, they issued a list a couple of years ago of all the names that have been refused because people tried to smuggle these names through. But, oh, no, that authority, they saw through them. They saw what people are trying to do. So, uh, Minnie, if you want to read about your beautiful voice... I will. OK, so here's, here's, <laughs> here's the first one. Here's the first one. So, read that one out. Ben Timover. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Just Ben. Tim over. Uh, here's another one. Neil and blow me. <laughs> <laughs> this will be available as a podcast. <laughs> Mini driver just going Neil and blow me. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Oil beef hooks. There's a nice Irishness to that, isn't it? Yeah. Oil uh, beef, beef hooks. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> Write them up like this, we can get away with this. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Uh, here's another one. Um, Anita Handjob. <laughs> that does like a proper name, doesn't it? She one of the handjobs from Delhi. Is she one of the Delhi handjobs? Uh... Wouldn't that have been amazing if the Queen Mum had accidentally <laughs> bought that horse? <laughs> handjob. How's Anita Handjob doing? <laughs> <laughs> This next one. No, they, they are all real. Willie Fisterbottom. <laughs> <laughs> How did they see through that one? <laughs> uh, here we go, another one. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and finally, <laughs> finally. Who farted? <laughs> Now, the oh, weird thing is, oh, Hoof Hearted did get through. Apparently, there, there was a horse called Hoof Hearted. <laughs> and uh, there's some footage, there's some footage of this horse with the commentary of the horse Hoof Hearted. Here, oh, here it is. Oh, wow. Scream outside. Colorado Coet. Toast a dozen on the inside. Questers Jet. Hoof Hearted! Hoof Hearted on the outside. It's close! Hoof Hearted. I don't know if that's real. I don't know if that's real. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, Stephen Merchant, Stephen Merchant, you've gone all Hollywood, Stephen Merchant. Yes. You have, though. Yes. I've seen pictures of you with the Halle Berry. With the Halle Berry? With the Halle Berry. With the Halle Berry, yes. Yes, I did a little bit in a movie. It's kind of a series of sketches, this movie, with lots of famous stars in, and I was asked if I would be on a blind date with Halle Berry. Hello. Yes. Yeah. And and I've seen it. It is very, very funny. Movie 43. I think it's out right. on Friday. Uh, right. Is it called Movie 43 because there's 43 sketches? Or is it 43 No, I don't know. I, no, I mean, they're looking for some mythical film called Movie 43, and, uh, and uh, these teenagers, and during the course of the movie, they, they stumble across um, f sketches with... And it's crazy, the cast list. It's, it's Kate Winslet and Hugh Jackman and, uh, and uh, Emma Stone and Richard Gere. I mean, it's mad. And I'm, as I say, I'm in this sketch. They said to me, do you want to be in a sketch with Halle Berry? And I was saying yes before they'd said Berry. And um, <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, and I just wanted a picture of me with Halle Berry. That's the truth of it. So I could show all the people that laughed at me when I was a teenager. Look at that. <laughs> and, um, this isn't the picture you show people, is it? <laughs> this is not the one. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What's your line to her in your blind date, then? I think I say, what on earth are you doing on a blind date with me? And she's very sweet about it. And then we, we play a game of truth or dare. Oh, yeah. And it starts and, we, and the, the dares escalate. And so, at one point, I, uh, I wind up with a tattooed penis on my face. And, <laughs> and she makes guacamole with one of her boobs and, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's classy. It's going to give uh, Lincoln a run for its money at the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. I, Do you make guacamole? I don't know how you make guacamole with your boob. Well, you get all the elements on Oh, you thanks. <laughs> Basic pestle and water, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other big Hollywood news is your stand-up tour, in almost like it's a movie in itself, is now being turned into a sitcom. Yeah, I did, I did the stand-up show in America, and some HBO, which is a TV network over yeah. there, came up and said, you know, would you think about doing it as a sitcom? And uh, my, my stand-up show was about my failure to, to find a wife and general pathetic life as a loser. And, uh, and they thought, yeah, we want this on TV. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we're doing. Is there yeah. not going to come a huge dilemma, though, when they say to you, we want to turn this into a, you know, a six-part, you know, like, masses and masses of series, that if you find a wife in that mm. time, you ruin your career? Yeah, he'll keep her in a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> sort of where he already does keep her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it is. A, yeah, you're right. It's a, well, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a documentary, so I could theoretically be married and still be acting the role. It's um, going to ruin your jam, though, much if ruin, you do it, get married. Yeah. Yeah. And in, I, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Thank you. You're just wishing on me a deep and miserable, lonely life. Hello. Just so the laugh keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is one of the episodes? Is one of the episodes going to feature that sort of hideous wedding experience you had? It is. It is. We. Uh, yeah. I. I, I mean. I thought I'd met this woman of my dreams at this wedding. I was at a wedding, and you know you get stuck sometimes on a table with people that you, that you don't know. And yeah. I, there was a girl opposite, and she was dynamite, and we hit it off. But I was stuck next to this couple, Ollie and Lisa, and they had this kid, this toddler, in a high chair, just sat there like that, just... <laughs> just yeah. bashing these yeah. big breadsticks and stuff. And, um, and the mother wouldn't reprimand if you just kept going, what's he like, what's he like? <laughs> And she was exhausting, and she, she would just dominate the table with these stories. You know, those people look just... They're not really stories. It was, it was all that... Here's one for you. Um, went to the... Uh, I went to the... Um, I went up the... Um, um, the... Um, the uh, no, 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 no. The, um, the um, supermarket. Went to the supermarket. <laughs> um, did a big... Uh, did a big um, shop. shop. Did a shop. <laughs> and I got back to the checkout, and I'd forgotten my purse. And I had to go home for it. <laughs> that was it. That was it, honestly. And I was thinking, if, if, if that story was making its way out of my brain towards my mouth, another part of my brain would have stepped in and gone, Oi, where the hell are you going? <laughs> <laughs> this is a wedding. I don't know what this is. This is just some bullshit. <laughs> so she's waiting on. And then her husband, who's quite a posh bloke, pipes up and he goes, um, I recognise you. Where do I recognise you from? And I was trying to impress this girl, so I said, Oh, I did this TV show called The Office. And he went, Oh, The Office, yeah, I've seen The Office, yeah. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> I'll tell you where you're going wrong with the office. <laughs> he said, not much story. I'm thinking, yeah, cos you know about stories cos you're married to bloody Charles Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the reason I blew it with this girl. I... So this toddler is sat there the whole time, right, and we're having some soup, and for no reason, this kid just took his shoe off, just lobbed it in the air, for no reason, <laughs> It came flying down, it landed in my suit, right? <laughs> all over me. I swear, just no one else is touched. I'm covered in it. <laughs> and the mother, Lisa, just went, oh, what's he like? <laughs> and I said. <laughs> He's like a <laughs> <laughs> Music now. Uh, this group's third album has topped the charts all over the world, and tonight they're performing their new single, If You Could See Me Now. Please welcome The Script! <laughs> It was February 14th, Valentine's Day. The roses came, but they took you away. Tattooed on my arm is a charm to disarm all the harm. Gotta keep myself calm, but the truth is you're gone. And I'll never get to show you these songs. 
Dad, you should see the tours that I'm on. I see you standing there next to mom, both singing along, yeah, arm and arm. Now there were days when I'm losing my faith, because the man wasn't good, he was great. He'd say music was the home for your pain, then explain I was young, he would say, take that rage, put it on the page, take the pace to the stage, blow the roof off the place. I'm trying to make you proud, do everything you did, I hope you're up there with God. Saying that's my game. Would you criticize me? Would you follow every line of my tear-stained face? Put your hand on the heart that was cold as the day you were taken away. I know it's been a while, but I can see it clear as day. Right now, I wish you could hear you say, I drink too much and I smoke too much Dutch. But if you can't see me now, that shit's a must. He used to say, I won't know a win until it cost me. Like I won't know real love till I've loved and I've lost it. So if you've lost a sister, someone's lost a mom. And if you've lost a dad, then someone's lost a son. And they're all missing out. Yeah, they're all missing out. So if you get a second to look down on me now. Now, 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 now Mom, Dad, I'm just missing you now I still look for your face in the crowd Oh, if you could see me now Oh, if you could see me now Would you stand in disgrace and take a bow Oh, if you could see me In the mirror, we look so alike Makes me shift the I look at the script. <laughs> now, uh, that is a uh, new single. It's off the album, number three, which has done incredibly well. Yeah. Uh, that single, it's not out till March the... March 4th. March yes. 4th. It's a ways away. ways. <laughs> but no, you've got to do the promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You've got you know, to be on the radio. We decided we'd give you, uh, give you the exclusive on it as well, so... Oh, thank you very yeah, much. You're very welcome. It's beautiful. I think everyone liked it. It was very good. Thank you very much. Um, You're on tour, at the, sort of on tour still, aren't you? We were on last night. Uh, we played in Hamburg uh, last night, uh, and then Munich. we're in. Oh, sorry, Munich. Munich, <laughs> Danny, get it right. <laughs> so, so showbiz. <laughs> Tomorrow's the Ziggo Dome in Holland. Oh, so lovely. So like 16,000 people tomorrow night right. as well. God. Yeah. Will they be as good as that audience, though? Will they? I doubt it. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Uh, I should say you're in uh, London at the O2, 22nd to the 23rd of March. Yeah, as yeah, well, it's yeah. It's going to be great. Now, if you like drinking, who doesn't, uh, uh, and you're going on tour, you have such a good system yes. for getting back to your room. Is it you? Danny? Yeah, it's me, yeah. yeah. Um, you I realise I lost the camera. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Other than that, I've got a great tour manager um, who, uh, who sticks the, the, tur the, the number to our room on the back of our phones, but I keep the same room in every hotel. It's so not clever. the same number in every hotel. Two, it's four, eight. Uh, shut up. <laughs> No, I was thinking it had to be a low number because, because if you went to, yeah, much. it was like 1102 when you get to a hotel there's no 11th floor. It should be 999 really, it would be great. <laughs> and, uh, and very quickly, uh, The Voice, yeah. have you, you've recorded all the chair turning we shot, bits? Yeah, we shot the blind parts, uh, blind auditions, which is the most exciting part. 
Um, we, we shot those. It was amazing. Really funny. And what are you guys... Are you just at home picking your nose while he's off? He's <laughs> <laughs> super old. <laughs> I've, uh, I have a show called The Mouth. And I... Can't... <laughs> Really I put the voice on mute and I just give him shit on. I love how obsessed we became, but like moving furniture was so, like the chair spins. It, it, it's, it's so much fun. I, it just it genuinely is. It, it must be. It fun. really is. I think. Do I mean, you just go there before any, any audience comes in and just have a little... me and Tom be there sitting around just yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Touching, <laughs> touching our buttons. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> uh, well, if everyone loves a mechanical chair, so uh, before we go tonight, uh, let's pay a visit to our very own uh, big red chair. Who's up first? Hello. Yes. Hello. What, what... <laughs> you look quite serious, sir. What's your name? I'm Hugo. Hugo, you are quite serious, aren't you? And what do you do, Hugo? Uh, I work in insurance. See, I, I, I wasn't going to guess that, but you could have. Um, <laughs> Insurance. Uh, we normally do property, but actually we've just branched out and we've just insured our first porn star's penis. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Against what? <laughs> Fire and theft. <laughs> uh, well, damage and uh, oh, being kidnapped oh, for kidnapped. ransom. Yeah. Wow. Is, is that your story? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. That's okay. I do. That's okay. okay. <laughs> that, that's just a dull day job. Uh... <laughs> Uh, off you go, you go with your tail. OK, so my tail today is of my uh, third driving test. So we're going along, fine, fine, fine. And the examiner says, right, in a moment we're going to uh, go through the emergency stop. I'll put my hand up and then just go for it, hit the brakes. Ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Minnie wasn't having it. I what was I Because I feel like we'd had the best of Hugo with the... <laughs> <laughs> I sort of wanted to know what was going to happen. Well, now you never will get the next one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She only plays a bitch. She only <laughs> plays a bitch. <laughs> yeah. OK, do we have someone else? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. This He's has got to be great. This guy is great. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, sir? Nathan. 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 Where are you from, Nathan? Australia. <laughs> His voice, though, that's a porn star's voice. <laughs> I think he's the... Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I'm never going to be a dame now. Really <laughs> <laughs> not. Nathan, Nathan, uh, uh, what do you do here now, Nathan? Uh, teaching. Teaching? What are you teaching? Not a lot. Um, <laughs> I te teach primary school kids. Anything at all? And you teach them a subject? Not on Mondays. Subjects? Anything, any subjects? Uh, no, I use one to, one to six and uh, get given and told to teach it. <laughs> So this is who's teaching our kids. <laughs> wow. Maybe some parent. Some parent a second ago was, I recognise him. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Nathan, Nathan, you're, I'll tell you now, you're now looking for a new job. But uh, don't, let that, don't let that distract you. Uh, off you go with the story. All right, so we're sitting here and uh, a few of the lads around the TV. Well, right, let's go uh, away for New Year's. Yeah, great. Go on a trip to uh, Rasol, France. Booking with Fanatics. 170 Aussies, Kiwis, bound to be trouble. Sitting there on a four-day bender. So uh, can I just stop you now? You're a primary school teacher! <laughs> <laughs> That's your job! <laughs> Sorry, I just... Somebody had to say that. Oh, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay. Uh, on about the fourth day, and uh, I take it upon myself to think this is a great idea, hand my beer to my mate, I run as fast as I can in my snow boots, slide on the ice like a penguin, I'm looking at this big, uh, big wall of powder and I think, great, this is going to stop me. Go straight through the wall of powder, fly a metre through the air and land on a set of metal stairs. As I hit the stairs, my head goes bang, down three flights of stairs. That explains a lot. <laughs> I get up and I as well, that was amazing. And I've got blood coming out of my mouth. I stand up and uh, look up and a whole crowd of people on the balcony going, oh, it's great, that's tops. The lads go, yeah. <laughs> Michael Cove must be so proud right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, hey, well done to everyone in the red chairs, and thank you to all my guests tonight. The script, ladies and gentlemen. No. This is Steve Richards. Claire Bowling. And Minnie Driver. Join me next week for the guests, including the stars of the Not
Locked Up sequel, Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann, Pop Group Little Mix, and the one and only Dame Helen Mirren will be here. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>《Next Meeting Her》was an accident, so how is he going to keep her? She's out of my league. Tonight's rom-com, coming next on BBC One.